Welcome, everyone, to episode 64 of Kowalski Analysis, a podcast designed to help you navigate the weight and become the best version of you. I'm your host, Rob Kowalski. And tonight, we have a friend of mine coming on the show. This is a guy that I actually interviewed early on in the podcast, someone I really enjoyed talking to and have maintained a friendship with ever since. And his name is Frank Rich. Frank is an entrepreneur. He's a certified men's health and addiction coach. He's a former bodybuilder like myself, except I think he, he actually took it a little bit further than I did. But he's a host of the Superhuman Life podcast. And after living with and battling addiction, depression, and anxiety for almost 20 years, he is now on a mission to help men who are suffering with many of the same issues. Frank founded Rebuilt Recovery, a company based on a growth-centric, holistic approach to addiction recovery. And he's helped thousands of men transform their physiques and break free from porn addiction, helping them create their very own superhuman life. So before we bring in Frank, I just want to quickly mention my sponsors. And the first one is Mr. Micah Hughes. Uh, he helps people achieve financial peace through real estate investing. So if you want to buy, sell, or invest, Micah will come alongside you and walk you through the entire process. I hear it's a great time right now to buy a home because the interest rates are low. It's also a great time to refinance, uh, which will take me into my next sponsor. And that is Advisors Mortgage. Actually, before I mention them, for Micah, call 443-532-8450, or you can email him at micahughes at mundalconsulting.com. You can also just send him a Facebook messenger message in here. Tell him that you're a friend of mine. And he will take good care of you. Next is Advisor, Advisors Mortgage. And they're my newest sponsor. And they have a highly competitive pricing structure coupled with their state-of-the-art technologies. Makes them second to none. And they're committed to guiding you through the home buying process. They actually work with MICA too. So it's a nice combination, nice partnership. But Advisors Mortgage offers all financing types as well as a one-time guarantee. As well as a close-on time guarantee, that is. Sorry, call Adrian White directly at 610-999-3448. Or you can visit his website at awhite.advisorsmortgage.com. I'll put the links below. You can actually you can look up Adrian. He's one of my friends, and you can do the same thing with him. You can just drop him a message. And either one of those guys, two minute phone call, they can tell you how much how much money they can save you if you're doing like a refinance or if you have a, a property maybe that you're wondering what it's worth. Two minute phone call um, with them, they can give you the heads up on how they can help you. All right, let's get into it. So with no further ado, I'm going to bring in. Frank Rich. There he is. All right, brother. How's it going, man? It's going. How about you? Good. All right. Before we get started, we like to do a segment that we call this or that. And I'm just going to ask you five questions and you're just going to say this or that. You ready to do it? Let's go. All right. First one, marinara or Alfredo? Marinara. Breaking mindsets or breaking habits? Are, are these... TV shows or books or <laughs> no, what, what do you, what, would you say it's more important to break mindsets or break habits? Oh, break mindsets, break mindsets. Okay. Interview Tony Robbins or interview Les Brown. Ooh, Tony, okay. although I may have it, may, I may have a direct link to Les Brown here pretty soon. Okay. But Tony's for sure. Okay, cool. Sleep on the left side or the right side of the bed. Depends on where the bed falls in the room. Whatever side is closest to the door. Okay, whatever side's close to Zora. Working with a team or working alone? Leading a team. <laughs> All right, that counts. All right, cool. I got to tell you about this EOS thing I've been doing. It's just changed. I'm yeah, you should Google it. Entrepreneurial Operating System. The guy, Gina Wickman, wrote a, a bestseller called Traction. Yeah, I've read, I've read Traction. We, we didn't follow EOS a lot in, in, in the agency, but it was definitely something that we utilized some of their, I've read Traction and he's got another book out there, but yeah, yeah. what's it, what's it doing for you guys, man? It's just so much stuff that I didn't realize I needed to do. Like it's how to run your business. It's, it's like my computer, you got a windows computer. It runs on, that's the operating system that your business runs on is EOS. And it's everything from how to set out your long-term 10 year, three year, one year goals, your core values, how you hire, how you review people, what your agenda is for every single meeting. Like everything is built in and what percentage of your to-dos you have to get done when you show up to your meeting it becomes a culture thing. Everybody's yeah. speaking the same language. It's freaking amazing. I'm actually, um, getting my business coach to bring it into everything I'm doing now personally. Cause I run around like a chicken with my head cut off. Like you said, like I got a bunch of stuff going on, but I'm like, I'm the guy that is, if really, if you want to break it down, I'm the CEO of each of the things and I have somebody helping me, but I'm of their direct report. It's not a team. It's one person reporting to me and I'm like running around and I'm not even, I'm a visionary 
That's mm-hmm. his other book was uh, Rocket Fuel. And uh, and you shouldn't feel bad about being a visionary because honestly, it's a great skill set to have, but you need that number two. That that was the one that actually, yeah, Rocket Fuel, I couldn't think of the second book. So in 2019, I was brought into a marketing agency of a very close friend of mine, another entrepreneur, another visionary. And you know, I've been building business or starting businesses. I haven't really successfully built a lot of them. Failed, failed quite a few times. I've been an entrepreneur since 2012. So this is not like something I just started a couple years ago, but every endeavor that I've had up until really this last year, maybe 18 months, has been that solo style. You know, my first company from 2012 to 2018, you know, I did a couple million dollars in, in sales online, but I was a single man show. I did everything. And, and so I was brought into this agency to be the second in command and run the ship. You know, he wanted me to become the operator and a very close friend of mine but i realized like seven months into that like i'm not that person like it was getting me in getting me into the workflow like i realized like i got to sit at the top project the vision and then build a team un- underneath me so yeah it's, it's something i'm already seeing in in rebuild recovery is the weaknesses in my own operationally man- management si- side of it and really looking forward to building more of a team out in in, in 2022 you know I've, a couple, you know, part-timers, contractors that, that run more on a project basis, but nobody full-time that is like a team member that takes care of an entire department or anything. So yeah, between Rebuilt, still run Frank Rich Fitness, a couple, couple hours a week running the podcast, like just like you, I'm a CEO type of role in three, four different things right now. But I know if any of them are really going to scale to where I want to get them to, yeah. you're going to have to start looking at, at operations in, in teams and, and yeah. systems. I love the EOS model because... I read E-Myth years ago, and it tells you mm-hmm. why you need to do it, like the systems and how you can't grow, really. You're going to be married to that business if you don't figure it out. And I read E-Myth a couple times, and I tried to implement it, and I couldn't do it. The beautiful thing about EOS is it's already done. It's already it's framework. Built. You just plug it in, and, yeah. and, and it runs. And so, yeah, I'm excited. I'm actually getting them. I'm putting everything that I'm doing underneath of it, the book, coaching, my social media clients, my events. We'll put it all underneath the one umbrella and I'm going to get people in the right seats. And I'm like, still a little like, mm, can it work kind of thing for everything? But I'm pretty hopeful because I feel like it's, to me, I, it's the light at the end of the tunnel to think, wow, I could do more because that's what I really, that's where my frustration comes in. Cause I feel like it's all this, there's so much more that I want to do, but I can't because I don't have the structure built out. So anyway, I, people were listening to us are like, are these guys going to talk about something that benefits me? But look, there's probably some business owners out there. If y'all want to know about EOS, I'd be happy to introduce you to my coach. It will change your business if that's that you're at that stage that you're needing something like this. Just drop me, uh, drop me the word. Uh, e- just put EOS in the comments if you want to know more information. I'll introduce you to my coach. Sorry. <laughs> no, there you go, dude. I actually, I, I, like, good. Like, like I told you, man. This, this is I, I, I more more than anything. I mean, I'll, I'll let you guide us here yeah, today because no. I, I, I could go on the business for for the next couple hours if you wanted it to. Oh, um, it. But you tell me where you want to go today, man. Yeah, like you having me back on your show. Now I'm just bringing on some of my favorite guests from last year, and you're one of them. And we just have such a good rapport anyway. We could just we just did just hang out and talk, and hopefully other people find it interesting. Honestly, it doesn't even I don't even care actually because I'm enjoying it. I mean, that, this is what I've done with my podcast and, and I tell the audience, I'm like, hey, I, I appreciate every single listener that tunes in on a weekly basis, whether they're listening on the audio side or the video side. And what I've realized is the growth over the last three to four months that, that I've had has been just because I bring people on and I just open it up and say, hey, let's talk like you and I are sitting in a room together and then we're going to invite people in to, to listen in. And, and, and that was the type of podcast that I used to enjoy listening yeah. to. So I, I, I like that I can provide to, to the market and absolutely there's going to be tons of value that come out of today's conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So let's just dive into it. So first off, if anybody wants to go back and listen to the conversation with Frank and I, I don't remember what month it was, but it was in the first, I would say, 30 podcasts. It was July 28th or 29th. I remember the date almost very vividly because of where I was at in, in my life. You had come on my show. I was I was in a different house. I was in a different location. I was in a relationship at a time. And I think the first, I think the day that you interviewed me was the first night that I'd slept in this new place. And I remember it because that day changed everything in my business. So one thing I'm very proud of is July 28th of last year, I woke up in this new apartment and I was like, kind of questioning like what's next. I left a relationship that I thought was going to be the rest of my life. We, I, I thought that we were gonna build a life together. So when I got here, I was like, Frank, you're starting over again. Like you're 36 at the time, 37, like you're really starting over again. What are you gonna do? And I'd say, I have 12 month lease on this place. What is one thing I can do every single day 
for the next 12 months and commit to it. And I committed to doing YouTube every Monday through Friday and I haven't missed. I, I didn't even, I hit the 12 months and I've kept going. So here we are 400 something you know, vid videos in, you know, it's been half a million, half a million plays, a couple thousand dollars made on the revenue side of things. Not great, but it's changed. It's changed my business. Now we've had 1800 men come through our courses, programs, and books just in the last year. And it's, it's putting us in a position where I mentioned rebuild recovery. I have a six figure year in our first, first full year of business. So there's a lot that I don't want to say I'm proud of. Cause yeah, cause I don't know if I'm, <laughs> I struggle <laughs> with pride but yeah very proud of i think more than anything just my consistency and and and, and discipline but yeah it was the end of july hey rob kowalski here when i first got serious about living intentionally and becoming a better version of myself i found a major shortage of things to do and people to do them with and it was the loneliness and boredom that led me to starting city fam so i just want to take a moment right now and encourage you to go over and join the city fam facebook community it's a free Facebook group, and in it you'll find purpose-driven people from all over the world that want to enjoy life to the fullest. You can search it on Facebook, or you can go to www.friendswithbetterbenefits.com, and it'll take you right there. While I'm mentioning it, if you're single, searching for real love, love before sex, as I like to say, I want to encourage you to join the Waiting Works community. That's another free Facebook group I put together designed to help people wait well, date well, and ultimately hit the mark in life and love you can go to www.reallovewaits.com and I'll see you over there. Now back to the episode. That's awesome, man. Awesome. Freaking five, five pod or uh, five YouTube videos a week for at least 52 weeks. So that's just 260 pod YouTube videos right there. It's almost yeah. reminds me of like the, what's that 75 hard. Do you know about that? I did that. Yeah. I did that earlier did this year. Mm -hmm. So tell people what that is. Cause it, yeah, 75 hard. It's, 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 it's a personal development challenge more, more than anything. I don't think it's a fitness challenge. I don't think it's this kind of thing, probably mental toughness more than anything. So yeah, so you commit to, you commit to daily disciplines, a set of disciplines for the course of 75 days. So it's two workouts, 45 minutes minimum. One of the, one of them has to be done outside. You have to follow a work, a diet plan. It doesn't, there's no specific diet that you have to follow, but you have to commit to following some type of structured meal plan or, or diet, no cheese, no alcohol for 75 days. You have to drink one gallon of water every single day. You have to read 10 pages of a nonfiction book. Audiobooks do not count. I mean, you gotta take a progress picture. And those are the, the daily disciplines. Now, what makes it difficult is, is you commit to doing for 75 days. If you get three weeks into it and you miss one of the daily disciplines, you gotta go all the way back to the beginning and, 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 and start it over. As a bodybuilder for, for 10 years, the challenge in and of itself wasn't difficult. Like it was like 40% of the contest prep from the challenging side of things. What I really enjoyed about it though, is it was the non-negotiables disciplines every single day. I'm good with books. Do I read every day? Not when I'm not doing 75 hard. I may miss a Saturday. I may miss a Sunday if I'm going to sleep in or, or, or whatnot. Monday through Friday, I'm pretty consistent. Do I get to workouts in every single day? No, I'm really consistent about getting my morning walk in. I get to the gym for weight training four to five days a week. If I miss a day, no big deal. But going through a challenge like this, it just it made you create the time to get the disciplines done because a one of the biggest excuses for people, why aren't you in shape? Why can't you build a business? Why can't you get a second thing going? Is I don't have the time, but forcing yourself to do this and having to find the time. I work 12, 14 hours some, some days, like getting two workouts in, like there was some of them, like I was doing my second workout at 10 o'clock at night. I'd much rather be laying in bed, sleeping at that point, but I knew I had, but I knew I had committed to it. So yeah, I, I, I think anybody could benefit from going through something like that. And I've seen people do variations of it, but yeah, the standard 75 hard, it's a mental toughness challenge. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. I, I even think about some of the things I know that you do for your clients with the porn and we'll get into it, but like fasting is one of them. And just being able to master yourself, even on something like a 75 hard has got to make you stronger in every area of your life. Well, you realize how easy you, you default to excuses and you accept those excuses or how easily you can lose an hour on TikTok. If you got to get two workouts and you're trying to make all this happen, trust me, your social media, mindless scrolling, it just, it goes away and you're like, you just feel amazing because you're like, I wasn't overloaded with stimulus. I, I didn't catch myself going down these mindless rabbit holes. I wasn't comparing myself. So yeah, it just opens up a lot to just your own self. Like where am I falling short? Where am I allowing you know, myself to ex accept excuses in certain areas of my life. So yeah, it's game changing. I, 
had a group of guys that all did it, close friends. They were doing Accountable and, and I did it for myself. They're like, Frank, you didn't post anything on social media about it. You weren't a part of the group or this or that. I was like, if people want to see me in shape, like scroll back on my Instagram. There's two and a half years of half naked pictures of Frank on the internet. That wasn't why I did it. Like I said, I did it because I wanted to refine some of my own daily disciplines. Yeah. And, and that was probably the biggest thing I got out of it. Yeah. It's almost like what Goggins says, but I'll do something you hate every day. Cause I want to say even like cold showers and there's one of the ones I read was like, take a cold shower every day for at least five minutes. I take a cold shower. I do the uh, Scottish shower every day where I turn it cold initially. And then, and then at the end, it ain't yeah. five minutes, but uh, I was like, I could see how imagine, imagine you're doing all those things that you said, and then you go back to normal life. It's like easy. You know, right? Because yeah. you could eat a piece of cheese or you could have a glass of wine or you could take a warm shower, hot shower. So it really does change things for you. I think it's good fasting. I know every, I've done the Daniel fast every year for the last, I don't know, eight or nine. And I know what that does for me. Cause sometimes I'll be drinking a cup of coffee and I'll be like, oh man, this coffee's good. Cause I'll remember what it's like not to not have it. I, I think I've heard you talk about this. Or I've, I've, I've heard it shared before. I don't know a lot about it. What is the Daniel fast? It's more of a spiritual thing. It's from the Bible, from the book of Daniel. So it's basically no, what you do eat for 21 days is fruit, vegetables, beans, grains, nuts. So no, no coffee, no caffeine, actually, supposedly I, I usually do green tea, no sugar, no processed foods, no, mm. you know, dairy, no alcohol, all that for 21 days. Yeah. Okay. But you're eating regular. So you're not going, have you ever gone extended fast? Have you ever gone two days, three, three, three days, twice? Days. I did okay. a three day twice. And I, I want to say one of them, I did no water for three days. Cause somebody did it. Yeah. And honestly, I didn't feel too bad. I was uh, trying to really, I was trying to manifest a miracle in someone's life, like a family member. Yeah. And it didn't happen. The thing I was praying for, I have seen miracles, but not just not then. So let's dive into the, let's dive into you. I want to talk about real quick or give people your testimony because bodybuilding, Let's talk about the porn addiction. Let's talk about how you got to be this coach for men, helping men overcome pornography addiction. Yeah. I probably want to keep that short. So no, it's funny. I got interviewed a couple of weeks back on a success podcast. We're more impacting my, my entrepreneurship journey more, more than anything. And, and, and the host of that show asked me who have been the most influential men in my life. And it's funny because I'm so fortunate and blessed currently, like I have the most amazing group of friends. I've been very intentional about creating my network. I've been very intentional about who, who I spend time with. Obviously I'm, I'm fortunate to host a podcast. I get to, I get to virtually meet and speak with people like yourself on a weekly basis. But when I was asked this question, like none of the active mentors in my life came up instantly. I have Josh Cachadorian who was there with me on church street in Orlando. When I got saved, I have Vince Del Monte, who is my business coach that I work for. And I help him coach online entrepreneurs, who is really a fundamental person of introducing me to the gospel. If I didn't join Vince's mastermind back in 2017, I don't know if I would, I, I know I would have never met Josh and I would have never been on church street on October 22nd of 2018 with Josh to be saved. But with all that in, you know, in mind, like I had these most, most amazing mentors and friends right now, the first person that came to mind as far as influential people in my life was my little league coach, was Bob Hall. Like he was coached me from 10 to 12 years old. And I had talked about Bob probably in 20 something years. And I think because I have been actively coaching little league, maybe it was more fresh, like helping the youth. But why I'm sharing this is, is because the follow-up question from the host was like, do you think because of the impact Bob had on you as a kid, do you think that is why you're so passionate to be a coach and to help people today? And it was like, whoa, kind of one of those moments like mid interview where like you had this kind of like enlightening awakening moment about your own past, like all the work that I've done on myself trying to figure out like, how did Frank end up here today? Something I completely glossed over, but but I know that is the case. So I had, I've had a very influential youth coach. And I think that kind of played a role in setting me on this trajectory to help other people. But I do believe that we all have a calling on our life and, and, and we are here for a purpose. And I think I was given as, as great as I am at that, I do believe I have a unique set of skills to, to help people. I think I have the ability to process a lot of high level information and then articulate it down into a very easily digestible message. And, and I love helping and I love serving and I have the ability to, to lead and influence some of my first first jobs when I was a teenager 
was managing and leading teams in grocery stores. Like I had a team of 10 employees when I was 19 years old. So I've always been a, a quote unquote leader. So I think that plays a massive role in why I do what I do today, helping men specifically with pornography. Now, obviously to get to the porn side of things, like you just don't wake up one day and be like, yeah, I'd like to get into this industry of having the difficult conversations with the taboo subject that nobody wants to address. So, you know, or, what I'm doing today is a result of my own story in my own recovery. But yeah, I've, I've been an athlete. I've been a bodybuilder. I've been an entrepreneur, like we talked about for the last 10 years. And underneath all that, I think is I have a heart to help and a heart to serve people. Now, I don't know if I would be doing any of this if I didn't get saved in 2018. And we talked more about that in the first episode, probably direct people to, to that. But yeah, I, 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 I found freedom first and foremost, I found Christ and changed my life. So now I get to share that with the world, but I've been, I've seen what living a life porn free can be like after being addicted and struggling with it for almost two decades. So now I try to spread that message to the world and, and, and help people help men really find freedom, but, but ultimately step into a bigger purpose for their life. So while I am an addiction recovery coach, what we do with our men is far beyond just helping them fix this isolated problem. We really set them on the trajectory to become the men that they were created to be. Love it. I was, first of all, I agree with you about the podcast. That really is the best part I have about having a podcast is gives us a reason to be intentional about having a friendship and you get to meet some really amazing people. Definitely agree with you there. I was listening to a, a video by Miles Monroe earlier. I was out running and uh, he was talking about how without purpose, without knowing your purpose, life has no meaning. And he's, it's the biggest tragedy in the world is people drifting through life and they don't even know why they're here. So how closely do you think, because I have my own opinions about like obedience to God and purpose, because I wasn't really until I got really surrendered in my life and pretty much the, the harder areas to give up. One of them was sex that I feel like God re revealed some of the things that I didn't know prior to that. So you talk about men that are, they're caught up with whatever addiction, specifically pornography. Do you think that there's a direct link to that blockage of not knowing why you're here? Oh, ab absolutely. Just from my own life experience is probably a great, a, a great example. Like I said, I, I knew from a very young age, like entrepreneurship, business ownership was the path. When you're in high school, you're filling out that like occupation. Once I got to the point where I realized like pro sports weren't like, weren't going to be the future for me, which probably was my sophomore junior year when I got around like some real high level athletes. And I realized like there was a genetic difference between those that make it and what I was given. So once I realized that I could no longer put future baseball player on the occupation in the future, it was business owner. I didn't know what the business was going to be. So I feel I had the, I had the inclination back then, but my purpose wasn't to be a ticket broker, which was the first business that I tried to start was successful at it, made a ton of money, but it wasn't a part of, of my purpose. There was the purpose of being a business owner, entrepreneur built into that. But because I was struggling with my own identity in the world, I wasn't able to really see, or maybe get clear on, on, on what my true purpose purpose was. So yeah, I do think that there, that there is a role that it plays in there. If you're struggling with a, you know, compulsive behavior, first of all, because a, a compulsive habit like pornography, there, there's nothing giving to it. It's all it's selfish. It's, it's, it's wrapped up in your own pleasure. And when you realize, I believe, or what I believe we're all put here to serve and help others, the simple act of I'm doing this for my own pleasure detaches you from serving or helping or doing anything. For, yeah. for anybody else. Yeah. I think it plays a huge role. Yeah. It's so true. It's like, if your purpose doesn't involve alleviating pain for someone else, it's not that gratifying. Hmm. Seriously. You ever think about that? I think I was just thinking, as you were talking, I'm thinking about somebody like Kevin Plank under armor and I'm sure there's things that he's passionate about that I don't know about, but like under armor itself, it's okay. You're selling clothes. Is that how gratifying can it be you to make a lot, of, just to make a lot of money? If you're yeah, not, but do you know the story of Under Armour, like how it got to it? I think that there was something with youth and the cotton like, shirts were like, yeah, it was, it was, like it was too hot. Or, it yeah. was a yeah. So yeah, I think he took a pair of lacrosse shorts and he made an undershirt with it. It was supposedly undershirts under your pads at first. I, and I, yeah. I, I'm not sure if I read his book or not. I know some of his story. He's from Maryland, but I'm just saying, and if you're, if he's using the money, which he is, he's using it for good things for inner city kids and other things, then it becomes very meaningful. But if you're not using your money and your success to help others, it's kind of empty. I don't know. When I was promoting, I made probably the most amount of money that I ever made in my life. 
and it was fun, but it wasn't like deeply rewarding. I wouldn't say. Yeah. And that's why you see, you see so many people in Hollywood that on the outside are projecting this ideal life. Like they have it all made, but they're unhappy. They're depressed. They're, they got this empty God sized hole in their heart. So you see it playing out there, but then I've had at least one or two entrepreneurs on my podcast that have exited 10, $20 million exits from their company, like life changing money where you never have to work again. And they get six months to a year into quote unquote retirement. And it's what am I supposed to do? Let me go do something else to serve and impact the world. So they end up starting another business and you hear more of those th than anything. It's like, because they realize like it wasn't about the end goal. It was about the process of getting there, but the service of others and helping me reach that milestone. Yeah. I love it. So let's talk about quickly, anybody that's just tuning in, they're like, and, and I'm sure you get some of this where people are just like, okay, what's the harm in porn, right? They're like, well, who am I hurting? Do you ever have to explain this to people? Like why quit? Why should they even consider it? I, I'm not here to, yeah, no, I, my, my role is not to convince anybody to do anything. By the time they come to you, they're already ready to quit. Or do you quickly, could you be like, okay, so here's just a few reasons why, you know, like, Depression, anxiety. Yeah. By the time I'm having conversations with men, they've already identified that there's a problem. I think I probably in enough of the content that, that we create on the education side of things, we get into some of the reasons. So people will find me because maybe they're curious if they, they have a problem. But by the time I'm having conversations with people, it's not a, do I need to convince you to do anything? Cause if I have to convince you, uh, that you need to make a change in your life, I don't want you in my program and I'll tell you that. So. Yeah, it's a tough one, man, because like, we're going to get into what do you want to do with your life? And I try to avoid the good, bad argument. Is it good? Is it bad? Obviously I have, you know, I have my views and how I see things and we can, I'm open to discussing that, but what you do with your life is your own choice and your own decision. If you could tell me like, what is it doing for you? What good are you getting out of it? How is you consuming pornography serving you to become a better person in any way, shape or form? And if there hasn't been a single person that's been able to give me an answer to that. So, okay. So you're participating in this behavior that is not doing anything for you. Why? So it's a matter of just flipping things back, back on the, on the other person. I went and saw Frank Turek, who's an apologist yesterday, and, and that's his whole approach to defending the gospel. It's somebody's going to give you this argument, just flip it back on them. And over time, whatever anybody says is going to end up eating itself. But no, there's, I've, I've been behind, been behind the scenes in the industry and you've had people on the show. I know that, that have exposed that. So if anybody says why, or what's bad about it, I direct them to what's actually going on behind the scenes. Cause you think you're consuming one thing and it's not, you think you're going to pornography for intimacy, but it's not the way that the brain responds to watching, consuming pornography and masturbating is not the same way that the brain responds to the physical act of intimacy, even yeah. somebody touching you. So I think a lot of people get caught up in, oh, I can't have sex. So I'll just replace it with pornography. And when you begin to look at it through the lens of neuroscience, you realize that it's causing this very harmful wiring in the brain, which in time can lead you to depression, social anxiety, erectile dysfunction, all these symptoms come later on down the road. I just want to mention it now. So don't forget Mitchell Eason. Did you see I had him on the podcast recently? I don't know who's don't know who he, he, he was from Netflix, the circle, good looking kid, 23 years old. He's a virgin famous. Okay. And yeah. He'd be great for you to talk to. And he's doing wow. the whole no, no fap and all that. So I, I've got to just remember to make that introduction. But, yeah, um, sorry, I don't, I'm not, a, I canceled Netflix last year when cuties. I'll, yeah. I'm not really, I don't. Yeah. So if people are like in like the new age, like pop scene, like I'm not really, I'm an old man, dude. I didn't actually know either. Honestly, I didn't see it. I don't even have cable, but yeah, but he, a friend of mine, Doug Bobst and, okay. and they introduced me and, and he was, yeah, great. No, Doug. he was great to talk to. So what's the worst case you've seen of porn negatively affecting someone's life? Are you allowed to tell me? Uh, yeah, I won't, I can't share any, any personal names. You know, I'll talk about, it really was the book that, that became the catalyst for everything that I'm doing. I don't know. I don't know if I mentioned it last time, but it's mandatory reading in, in our program. It's, it's a book by Michael John Cusick called surfing for God. And so I heard this back in 2018, he was interviewed by a friend of mine and it was the first time I heard anybody talk about the real dangers and how, you know, so Michael was a, he was a professional man. Like he was, I believe he was a therapist, like a psychologist, like help, like helping coach people, but behind the scenes, like he was struggling with this and it led him into 
prostitution, escort. So these are things that I've all seen. I've talked to guys all the time that are, you know, struggling with having to buy sex. So I've seen a lot of that. He talked about it in a very dark way. So that is one book I would recommend everybody that's maybe interested in learning more about this can check out would be Surfing for God. Um, myself, my, I've, I've struggled with, or I did PIED, like the inability to like get an erection or perform sex in, in, in real time. I've spoken with men that like can't, can't leave home. Like they can't, they can't even approach a woman and, and have a conversation. Yeah. There's been quite a few. I don't know if I could share anything like two, two. Let's see. Yeah, no, that's good. So rewiring your brain. I was looking at some of your videos on YouTube and you got a, several of them about that. So I know you got the new guide out, the seven step guide. Is mm -hmm. that the same information is it a lot of the same steps is it the seven steps to rewire your brain and actually just talk more about that when you say rewiring your brain what do you i know what gratitude does rewiring your brain but explain to me the whole concept or for anybody that doesn't really understand it yeah there's your brain is your, your brain's a muscle it's well it's fat and it's the way that i try to explain this is our brain is a filtration system that shows us it filters out what's not important and it shows us what is important to, to us. There's a lot going on in the world that as we're walking and navigating through life, like we, we're not seeing. If we saw everything that was going on in the world, like we would just be overstimulated and it'd be chaos for every single sure. one of us. Now, there's a concept in, in neuroscience it says what fires together wires together so realize every activity as people are listening to this conversation their brain is firing synapses there's little neurons there's electrons going on communicating things sending signals oh when frank says this word it triggers this there's a neuron attached to maybe an old memory that's going to fire this to another side of the brain and then this is going to dictate a certain response like you, you, we all know this we'll hear maybe a certain word or maybe we'll hear a name and it's attached to a traumatic experience or traumatic attached to a memory all all that is happening behind the scenes from a neurological perspective but what wires together what fires together wires together over time you begin to develop these hardwired behaviors these hardwired patterns our goal in life is is survival from a biological perspective our goal with our body is to survive so if we can auto auto regulate as much as possible on a daily basis about 60 percent of our day happens unconsciously there's things that every single one of us are doing that we've developed these habits over time that we don't even need to think about occurring what ends up as what fires together, wires together over time, when you see certain things, when you, you know, watch pornography and, and you see a certain type of body, then you connect that to, okay, when I see this body, it's going to lead me to do this act with myself. So you begin to create these neural connections of female physique, masturbation, release. Now the, and this is where guys talk about, I feel the trigger. I feel a physical need to go and release, or I feel physical need to go and look at pornography because they develop these hardwire connections when something happens in their life whether it's stress whether it's rejection whether it's lack of motivation or, or getting up in the morning some guys need like porn like a shot of espresso it's like in order for me to get my day started i need to lay in bed for 10 minutes and watch pornography because they've developed the hardwired habits so when we talk about rebooting which is the industry term of getting you over pornography i talk about it in in unwiring in, in rewiring process. So it's really two steps. You have to unwire the old patterns of behavior. So whatever has caused you to feel like you need pornography, we got to get underneath that and unwire those behaviors. This is where no, like no fap is, is doing this. I'm going to stop doing the behaviors that are causing me to objectify women, look at porn and masturbate. So no fap is taking care of the unwiring. The rewiring process is like playing offense. So I always talk about an offensive defensive strategy. Defense is maybe I'll put some accountability software. Maybe I'll download Frank's book, seven steps. Maybe I'll hire a coach, all defensive strategies. These are going to help you from doing the behavior that is causing the addiction. The rewiring process is where you play offense. Things like gratitude literally changes the molecular structure of your brain. Things like cold showers, Three minutes in cold plunge, 250% increase in dopamine for an extended period of time. So all these are like actual things that we can do. Acts of kindness, literally the act of doing something of service for somebody will trigger dopamine release in certain areas of your brain. So these are all offensive strategies that we can do. Once we had the defense and we've stopped consuming the pornography, we then begin to play offense, rewire or reboot our brain. And then what we do is, is we utilize both the offense and defense and then look at it from a fully, you know, integrated holistic approach, nutrition, training, other areas of your life. How are they all playing a role in helping you get healthy?
dude, that was a freaking awesome explanation, man. Seriously. It was really <laughs> good. No, because I, a lot of the things you said, I guess I've intuitively known. I might even talked about a little bit. Don't just try not to do something like, so a lot of times you, if you don't, there's a bad habit, you're just, so you, you, you white knuckle it and you're trying not to do it versus going, no, let's be proactive and go volunteer or life coach or work out. Or there's a lot of things that you can do to get those feel good hormones. Yeah. And, and, uh, you see a lot of times when people are struggling, they keep relapsing with whatever it's because they're being lazy in all honesty, they're not going out. They're not, a lot of times they're not in the gym regularly, or maybe they're whatever their diet sucks or they don't go to church on Sunday. And there's a lot of things I could mention, but yeah, I've, I know what's worked in my life is I had a lot of negative things that I needed to, you know, purge. And it was when I, I had to replace them with something and I got, mine was a lot, very affiliated with church got on leadership, joined the church softball team, life coach. Like I was just like, I got to keep busy or I'm going to, you know, go back. So I feel like a lot of people, they do play the defense, but they, I got friends that are on like things like an abuse. They drink too much. They're alcoholics. Mm. And that's an abuse is that you take it in the morning. And if you drink later, you get sick and, um, still can't stay sober because they're yeah. not playing offense. Now I had, I had a doctor on a uh, Dr. Rob Kelly. So alcoholism is something that this, and this was new to me. So there's a very clear difference in an alcoholic's brain and everybody else's brain. So a lot of this offense defense stuff, like it, it doesn't apply the same to alcohol because the way that he was explaining. So I talked about creating these neural connections and over time with something like pornography, the longer you go without those neural pathways, they'll begin to atrophy and eventually they'll fizzle away. I don't know if they ever completely go away, but they atrophy to a point where the pool is not as strong. With alcoholism, because it's actually like genetically a, like a different brain, they can go 10 years without alcohol. The minute they get that first sip, it's it that neural connection is like where it was the day that they stopped drinking. So an alcohol recovery is, is a little bit different. Of, of an animal, but anybody that's maybe interested in that, I'd maybe direct them. Cause I'm, I don't, not an expert that can talk on it to go check out the podcast that I did with Dr. Rob Kelly, because it was eye opening to me. Cause I, I've had alcohol issues in my family, but I don't know if anybody was ever truly an alcoholic because it seemed like when they were ready to stop, like they were able to stop. But I have known people that, that can't and, and need like daily AA meetings for decades. So yeah, alcoholism is, is a tricky one. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go back and listen to it. I don't know if I bought into the whole alcohol is, is a, a disease. Alcoholism is a disease thing. I guess I believe that addiction is a disease, but I don't believe it's something that can't be overcome because I did it in my own life. And uh, then the, 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 the question would be, were you an alcoholic or were you just a heavy drinker? I think a lot of it was circumstantial because of when I was promoting, I was like always in the bars and it was always free. So yeah. a lot of it was just what kind of got caught i got myself in the negative pattern but yeah so it's more be, more behavioral than true like physiological but now it doesn't take much to be considered an alcoholic i don't know if you've ever looked at the guidelines it's if you were to drink i don't even know the frequency but it's fairly infrequent and you can be considered an alcoholic if you're drink once every week or whatever it was i forget so i don't know if yeah. i buy into some of the definitions yeah i think where he was going is not not somebody that would is drinking once a week. It's because he's is a recovering alcoholic in and of himself. Like I said, I don't. This is way off yeah. topic today than I think where you wanted to go. But yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah. So let's talk about the the porn stuff. So what's the number one reason that you see people relapse? Like clients, or maybe not. Maybe it's former clients. Even is there a reason why? Like something that's pretty common. Yeah, I spent a lot of time this year r really thinking about this. A, why can't a guy succeed or why would he, why would he relapse? And I think I've narrowed it down to a very clear thing. And it's one of, it's one of two reasons. Once they've identified and accepted that it's a problem and they've committed to taking action in their life and removing it, a guy will only struggle and relapse due to one of two things, either lack of belief in and of himself that he can succeed because chances are when you're struggling with this, you know, identify this problem, you've tried and failed over and over and over and over again. So most often you get to the point where it's like, can I even do this? Is it worth even trying? So it's a lack of belief or confidence in and of himself or lacking character traits, discipline and willpower. And I believe this to my core. It is one of two reasons. You either don't believe that you can't succeed or you deserve a life with pornography or you don't possess the necessary traits to not give in to the temptation and do the things that you know needed need to be done. 
it's delayed gratification. It's discipline. It's it's willpower. And, and when people hear this, they probably it's no, that's not true, Frank. That's too simple. Like we can get into it. I believe it at my core. It's either you do not believe that you either deserve it or you can succeed without it, or you just don't possess the necessary character traits inside to do the necessary things. So uh, the first time we talked, like you said, it was July last year, you challenged me to not look at porn ever again. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. And honestly, after I did it, the commitment, it was pretty easy. I like, I didn't even think about it for a couple months. And it, it's not something I did very often, but I would say once a month, I would get something would happen. Either I would get really depressed or horny, or I would get mad at God because I've been single so long or something would happen. And about once a month, let's say. And so after that, it was a few months, didn't think about it, but then it was, I think it was Halloween night. And I, again, I think I've even told you about it and, and I was at a party and there was probably girls walking around in outfits. Maybe that contributed to it. Some of it was just, I had a couple of drinks. I went home alone. I was depressed or upset that I'm, it's been a long time. And, and since then there's been a few times, not many, but I would say I could probably count on one hand, how many times I looked at porn since we did our podcast. Yeah, definitely on two hands, maybe one hand. I know like. For me, yeah, I don't know where I rank in that. It, like with the uh, the whole, do I consider it an addiction? For me, it's it's a, such a struggle to like, it's the closest thing I can get to having sex. And like, of course I can go somewhere in my mind. And I guess that's what I've reasoned to myself the few times that I've done it. It's basically like, I deserve to be gratified in this way. And God's not giving it to me. And I'm going to take matters into my own hands no pun intended yeah can i but, i mean yeah, speak to that can i can i push you a little bit here sure. i mean only because i love only because i love Please. your brother and i consider yeah, you yeah. a very close friend so yeah. you said a couple things there in the last statement kind of proved my point because you said i deserve something what do you deserve you you, you have the greatest ask. gift of you have the greatest gift of all time you have a rob you have like you have today you have an opportunity today to live like once that i don't believe we deserve anything that so that's it i i would classify that as a character trait if you want my opinion how i bring it back to what i shared with you i don't deserve sex i don't deserve anything god gave me this life and the skill sets to serve other people and live out my purpose i don't deserve anything beyond the life that i've already been given so if you catch yourself in those thoughts that would i would see that would be the problem now i could actually take it back to even something you said before because you said i, I went to this party I knew that there was going to be girls, Halloween, that comes with sex and lust. And we all know what that, if you had done the work in the beginning, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying you needed to do this, Rob, because I don't think you have a major addiction, but if you were working through our program, here's why I would take you is, okay, did we know going into this party, what we we're going to be presented with? And had we laid the, had we done the necessary groundwork to prepare ourselves in those moments? So when we got home from the party, we weren't still struggling with these other thoughts, so forth and so forth. So the one with, I deserve this character, the other one, discipline, just my opinion oh, it's through, good. through the lens that I see things. Definitely victim. I could, I could like when you repeated it back to me, it was, vic it was victim mentality. I got home, I felt sorry mm -hmm. for myself and wanted to. Yeah shake my fist at god and that's okay i'm not like i'm not rob you're not a horrible person you're not a bad like dude we're, we're all sinners like none of us are claiming to be tell guys to be yeah that are single for long because that's why i have a friend that's married and he was a sex addict and he's dude he's like it's easier for you and i'm like why he goes because you don't have to have sex he's like he said it's harder for him because he has to have sex with his wife and he was a sex addict. i'm like i don't want to hear that because you have an outlet like to express that i have none so do you think that one person has it harder than another? Definitely the single person, right? Yeah, I would, I would assume maybe this is where you and I are just completely different. I've pushed sex down so far the list of needs or, or even things that I think about that I just, I'm probably going to have a problem of, do I actually want to have sex with my wife when I, if I end up like having one? You're, like, so you're I, not I, masturbating. I, you're not masturbating on a regular, meaning even once a month. Really? Wow. Because I know we had that conversation where you're like porn, obviously not necessarily self pleasure without the stimulus. So you're not even. Yeah. Going so on. yeah, had J John Gray on, author of the you, you interviewed as well, Men Are From Mars, Women, Women Are From Venus. So he got into we t discussed a little bit of the healthy masturbation kind of pleasure. It it comes down to me that like the act of masturbation is a purely selfish 
act. It's for my own pleasure. It's for my own gratification. Rob, I had a hard time even saying I was proud of anything that I do. So that's where I'm at. Like I, I struggle with doing anything. And, and I know that this is probably my biggest area of struggling right now is I don't allow myself to really do anything for pleasure and, and enjoyment. So yeah, no, it's been a, a tough, almost three years now. Dude, that's amazing. Hold on. So you haven't masturbated for years? Wow. I've often said to myself, I want to meet the guy that's single, abstaining and not struggling. Because honestly, I'm like, I, I didn't think it was possible. Like it's gotten easier for me where I can go. I just re recently, after the last time I looked at pornography, I signed a three month covenant with God, not to look lustfully. And that includes in my mind, like holding thoughts in my mind. Now I screwed up once since I signed it about a month oh. into it and, um, not with porn, but just whatever. And yeah, I don't, I didn't think it was possible like to not struggle because it's, and that's what, for me, I think it's been like, I, it is victim. Cause I'll be like, this is unfair. God, like you gave me a sex drive and according to the Bible, we're not even supposed to forget porn. We're not even supposed to have a thought in our head. Like Jesus said, if you lust after a woman in your mind's eye, so it's, it's almost don't even think about your dick. Don't even touch, don't touch it unless you got to pee. Just, <laughs> and that seems very unfair. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, 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 I know for me, as my work has really grown over the last year and a half and our audience has grown and the messages that, that I get more than anything, what keeps me going is the level of responsibility that I feel I now hold in the world. We're getting 60 to 70,000 men per month that either are hearing or watching my message. So it's not a huge audience. I don't, I know that there's other people out there that are reaching millions of people on a daily basis, but there are a lot of men that, you know, and I get, if, if I didn't get messages every single day, Frank, you have no idea how you've changed my life. Thank you for this. You've helped me stay 30 days. You've helped me go six months clean. So a lot of why I continue to a put as much out into the world as I do, but it's also helped me hold myself accountable because I feel like I don't want to say I have the world watching me. There's a lot of people that are counting on me to a provide them. I'm constantly learning more and more. The only way I could have done 400 plus videos is if I'm constantly learning more about the process, interviewing, getting certifications, going to seminars, reading books, doing all these things. So I'm, every week I'm equipping myself with more tools for myself, but then once I can share them with the world and then I'm, I'm getting in the trenches with, like I said, we have 1800 men that have gone through our books, programs, coaching and courses over the last, you know, year and a half. So I'm getting a lot of real time feedback as, as well. So something that's really helped me, like I said, is just having this responsibility of why I'm doing this. No, for sure. Same with me with the book. That's just what keeps me out of tr trouble is the people I would let down for sure. And the platform is definitely yeah kept me kept me on but dude i live you know. in, but I, I live in tampa florida bro it's it's a fitness hub and i go to i go to one of the, the biggest gyms like in in the area like to say that i never have a, a thought that i'm not proud of or my mind doesn't go to an area that it's it shouldn't that that'd be lying but i definitely do my best to when that does happen really as fast as possible you know what's when you were talking i realized something because that the last i don't know month or two it's been fairly it's been easier and i've noticed that my business the things that i've been working on for a long time are gaining traction and i'm starting connection between the fact that things are starting to go well and the, the urge to masturbate is not as strong as it was when i was really struggling so do you find like with your people that you work with a lot of times their addiction is connected to something maybe they're not happy with in their life specifically related to with men related to their purpose lack of success almost, of some sort yeah yeah almost always is the problem with pornography really a man manifestation of a guy not addressing something else in in his life whether it's he's not attacking his work relentlessly he's maybe he's not actively pursuing relationships maybe not actively pursuing his wife so usually if there's an area in his life that he's not giving certain attention to and it's eating away at him so in order to mask that feeling mask that emotions let me go pleasure myself but then what that does is that causes this whole other feeling of guilt 
shame and anxiety. So then you get caught up in this, in, in this cycle. You know, that's why on, on like our site, like we talk about faith, fitness, finance, family, freedom. Like we get the guys out into the, out into the community during ser doing service projects. I've had multiple clients, like in the course of four months, not only like improve their work at their job, but launch other businesses. So yeah, it's almost always the porn issue is a manifestation of another area in his life that he's not fully addressing or, or giving the attention that it needs. Mm. So fix case, that first, then you, then like you said, like when, when things are going really well with the business and things are going, it's like the even need or urge to, to, to masturbate goes away. Yeah. In my case, it wasn't, I wasn't not paying attention. I paid all the attention to those things I'd sacrificed so greatly and it was painful. It was like the hope deferred makes the heart sick. The word says, so like when the dream isn't manifesting and you've given everything for it, it hurts. And sometimes mm. like I've used, definitely used sex as a drug in the past and now I'm not having sex. So lust is the next best thing for me or, or yeah. So you were too focused on the outcome of what you're doing as to understanding that the process of what you were actually doing is where the real transformation is taking place. Like you were too focused on, I'm doing this to achieve this instead of I'm doing these things in order to develop myself and become the person that can potentially achieve this goal. For sure. I wanted a payoff at some point. Like yeah. you understand that as a bodybuilder, dude, at some point you get grumpy when you're yeah. <laughs> like, you're eating healthy, you're doing mm -hmm. cardio. At some point you're like, let's get this freaking show over with. I'm done. Yeah, but bodybuilding is a great example though, because it is purely subjective. Like you, you can go 16 weeks, not miss a meal, hit multiple cardios every single day, get every single workout in. You've logged everything. You show up the absolute perfect. You've checked every single box, but then the, the outcome is left in somebody else's hands because it's you versus somebody else. And then somebody else's opinion on how that looks. So if you compete as a bodybuilder with only focusing on, I'm going to win first place, I'm going to win first place, I'm going to win first place. And you don't understand that it's a process to get you there. That is where you're developing character traits is where you're developing discipline is where you develop being belief in and of yourself. That is, that's what atomic habits is about. I don't know if you've ever read atomic habits by James clear It's understanding that there's a difference between a process goal, which is I'm doing these things in order to become X person that can achieve this goal versus a outcome goal, which is I'm doing this thing to achieve. It's good, so it's yeah. a matter of perspective. Right. Yeah. Atomic habits. I think I heard you mention that before I have to check it out. So yeah, let's it's, the about... it's the fourth book in our mandatory reading for all of my clients. How long is your program? Four months, four months. Yeah. They read a pretty book aggressive month. pace, a book a month. Yeah. So let's talk about the seven the habits. Uh, I'm sorry. What's the URL? Give it to me and I'll put it in the, the seven step guide.com sevenstepguide.com and this is basically a seven step guide to help people get free from porn yeah so the way that i the way that i frame everything that i do and it's a philosophy that we built the entire coaching off of is that in order to overcome your addiction to pornography you must become the man that is no longer addicted to porn and i put a lot of emphasis on that word becoming because i think that is where there's a massive identity change so it's a lot easier to change your identity than it is to develop a new habit. And when you understand that everything that we're doing is to take you through this identity change of how you see yourself showing up in the world, then what I do begins to make sense. But yes, yeah, the seven step guide to creating a life without porn. It's not, there's not a lot of tactics in that book about what do you do when you're triggered? What do you do when you feel the need to masturbate? It's go through these processes to begin or go through these steps to begin the unwiring and rewiring process. So I, 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 I may butcher them a little bit, but I believe it's, you know, identify and acknowledge that there is a problem that's addiction therapy 101. Like if you're going to change anything in every life, you got to admit that there's a problem that needs to be changed, reach out to somebody else or get some type of accountability. So you need to, once you've identified, there's a problem, you need to tell somebody else about it. That could be a coach. It could be a therapist. It could be not your spouse, not your partner. That's not the person that becomes your accountability. Somebody ideally in the same sex. So if men, pastor, coach, just a male mentor. So you tell them that there's a problem. You commit to making change. So all those are tied up in the first three. Then you write a plan. No, you identify the problems that porn has created in your life. So if you're gonna change something, you have to know what needs to be changed. If we're having a problem with pornography, but the porn problem is really manifesting in our ability to get out of bed and go to work or go to the gym or create meaningful relationships, then we don't fix 
the porn problem and all that stuff solves itself. We begin to attack those areas while at the same time addressing porn. So we gotta identify where the problem has been. Then we create a plan for our life after pornography. So get clear, and that's where I said faith, fitness, mm -hmm. finance, family, and freedom. So we break everything down into these five pillars that I believe if, if you've tackled those and are succeeding in those five areas, then you're gonna have a successful life. Then there's fasting, and then the last step is just, is just self-belief because none of this works if you don't believe that you can do it or you don't have the confidence the, that you can succeed. So Love I think it. I butchered those a little bit, but, but no, those are the good. six or seven steps. And people can find that at the seven step guide.com. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, man. It's a free resource. Is it free? Mm -hmm. That's yeah, great. Totally free. Love it. I actually want to introduce you to Daniel Lappin too, a rabbi. Do you know him? He's America's mm -hmm. rabbi. He might be good for you because he talks about the five F's. He's got a pretty good audience. He puts out a lot of content, but he talks about faith family, fitness, uh, finance, and I can't remember what the other one is, but it reminded me very much what you, of what you just said. So he might be someone worth talking about, but he, he was on my podcast and he talked about how going back to what we, we were discussing a minute ago, where if a man uh, is suffering from uh, impotence and he goes into the doctor, the first question I'll ask you is about your job. Like, how's your mm -hmm. job going? And oftentimes it's not going well. Something happened in his career and now he can't perform where women actually are more desirable to men after if they lose their ability to make money almost like when they're more domesticated where they're more attractive to men. And I was like, it was some interesting stuff that people may agree or disagree with, but he did have science to back no, it up. No, that's no, that's great. And I have a friend, Dr. Dr. Trish Lee, cognitive neuroscience. She works works in the same space, has an amazing YouTube channel, podcast, is doing incredible work. One of her first questions she asked anybody in her consultation is what's the what's the primary stressor? In, in your life right now? Is it work, relationships, whatever? Because if we can identify what is causing the anxiety or causing the stress in your life, just like I said, we need to attack those areas and then it makes solving the porn problem a whole lot easier. So what's next, man? What's uh, next for Frank Rich? Yeah, we've been doing specifically one-on-one -on -one coaching for, for the first year. So only because I didn't know any other way to do it. Like I was like, when I started this, when I started the coaching, like I wasn't certified, like the first people that, that reached out to help was like, can you help me quit this? And I was like, I don't know. Like I did it for myself, but I don't know if I could help anybody else. So we did it 12, 13 months of only working in a one-on-one -on -one capacity, just because I needed that real time biofeedback. I needed to know, okay, you're bringing these problems to me. Now go do this week and come back to me next week. And then, and that was how I developed this curriculum. These past two months we've launched uh, groups now, which is going amazing because what I'm realizing is like the conversation going on behind the scenes, like with me not even involved is what's really changing, changing our lives. So we have the one-on-one -on -one coaching. We have group that we just launched. We have a course that's in development now that it should be available by December, which will, you know, give you the 16 week curriculum that you can go run it and, and do it on your own in the early stages of a book that'll be developed or hopefully will be launched at some point in 2022. And then just last week began the conversations for, for some supplements. Yeah. It's rebuilt recovery getting to the next level in, in, in 2022 is your own supplement yeah. line. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. What kind of supplements is it? Are we talking about just bodybuilding stuff or are we doing stuff? For no. The so these would be, yeah. So these would be, these would be brain re reboots of things that can trigger and, and release dopamine. So you have L-DOPA and then maybe some nootropics help with clarity, focus, energy. Like I said, very early preliminary conversations, probably nothing would even come out of this until at least third quarter of, of 2022. But yeah, as of right now, we're focused on getting the course done and live finishing up the book podcast just hit episode 100 proud about that awesome. so yeah looking to continue to grow that get on more shows like this and yeah just keep getting this mission or message out there into the world what's the book going to be called reboot manual is what I, is what i have right now so it's going to be that seven with kind of five more steps but it's not like a it's not a 12 step guide it's it's more of a okay these are this is the toolbox that that you need. So mm. yeah, more from a business perspective, it's like, it's more of a, a lead gen kind of value ladder, take them from the free to 20 to sure. a couple hundred dollars to $1,200 to potentially $5,000. So yeah, just building out a product suite. I like it. That's awesome. Well, there's definitely a need. <laughs> 
I mean, it's, and the thing is, I think more and more people are becoming aware of the fact that porn is no good because it, I don't think 10 years ago, people really thought about this stuff. When I got started, I didn't, I don't feel like the conversation was being had to, to the level that it is now. I've been, it's been really cool to see talks like guys like Rogan addressing it on his podcast. You have Dr. Andrew Huberman, who's out of Stanford, which is, he's made the reins from Power Project with Mark Bell, a couple hundred thousand. He's been on Tim Ferriss. He's been on some big name, big name talks. Hopefully I can get Andrew on some point next year. But yeah, it's, it's a conversation that is beginning to had in a lot more places. And yeah, it's going to continue to need to be had. Super important. Well, cool, man. It's always great catching up, Frank. Thanks for coming on. Where's the best place for people to YouTube and Instagram. So YouTube is rebuild your life or just connect me on Instagram at the superhuman Frank. Those would be the best two places or download the seven step guide. Like you said, awesome. yeah, well, we'll make sure we put the links in the 